listening to To The Spirit Podcast. Hi, friends, and welcome to The Spirit. I'm your host, Beck. And I'm your co-host, Steph. Hi, Steph. Hi, Beck. Guess what, friends? We just made the list in the top 15 paranormal podcasts in 2020. According to Feedspot.com, we ranked in at number 11, just a few spots below Clyde Lewis. So if you want to check it out, I am going to link that listing in the description of this episode. Also, you can find us now on iHeartRadio. Steph, you know what's coming up? Halloween's coming up. Well, yeah, but you know what else is coming up? Uh, I could say something, but... <laughs> <laughs> a full blue moon? Oh, yeah, I heard about on that. On Halloween. We also have a bonus Halloween episode coming up on Friday, October 30th, the day before Halloween, for you to enjoy. I must warn you, there's explicit language, but the fun and laughter will be flowing. Grab a drink, relax, have some fun with us, let your hair down, because sometimes you just have to let your hair down, you know? Yeah. Today, we are going to be discussing television series and video games. Is it television serieses or just series? Is series plural for series? Apparently, Siri thinks I just called her. My phone <laughs> just went off. We'd like to welcome Ricky and Brian into this discussion. So welcome, boys. Hi. Hi. And it's apropos that we're discussing scary, weird, and paranormal TV shows and video games because... I don't know if you know this, but Zach Baggins from Ghost Adventures is dropping an episode tomorrow, that would be Thursday, October 29th, called Horror at Joe Exotic Zoo. Wow, there's there's got to be a lot of horror coming from that place. Yeah, there's more horror to Joe yeah. Exotic. I mean, I, but, hey, it's Joe Exotic. I I'm mean. just trying to figure out what is it that he's going to be picking up, like dead lion roars or what? <laughs> exactly. Mm. Didn't he kill a few, like, pretty much murdered them because he was angry with them? Yeah, but is he going to be talking to the spirits of them? Zach? Is he going to be like, (laughs) Simba, come through, Simba. (laughs) I I wonder if Carol Baskin is going to drop by. Oh, (laughs) The ghost of Carol Baskin. (laughs) Yeah, that that is one character who, of course, in this day and age, she's America's sweetheart. Yeah, Um, It's unfortunate because I just got over caring about all that stuff, too. I just yeah. got over um, that whole show and that whole... And now he's bringing it back. He's bringing it back, yeah. Oh. Did you know that they actually, speaking of, I mean, it's horror movies, but they've made like two or three, t- uh, I think, I don't think it's trauma, it might be trauma, but they've done like two or three zombie apocalypse, coronavirus style, Joe Exotic movies. Wow. Now, it's, I, think, I think they're making three. There's a great reviewer called Cinema Snob on YouTube who I highly recommend. He's reviewed all of them. They were each made in like two days. But, I mean, think about that. At the beginning of the year, nobody knew who this guy was, and and now they're making movies about him. And And he's still in prison, right? As far as I know. Yeah. Because he wants to get pardoned, I think. Is he making royalties off any of this? I don't know. That's crazy. I'm wondering if they're making money off of him while he's sitting in prison. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I know he's... (laughs) Yeah, he's angry about... Not being a part of everything, I just remember that. I'm over here sweating like a pig. I can feel my headphones sliding off my <laughs> face. This is the hot yoga Ooh, studio. It is. <laughs> it gets warm in here. It's um, going to start smelling like beans and bacon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to dive into first? Do you want to dive into video games? you want to dive into TV series? Well, Brian's, it's his first episode. Yeah, let's do video games first. Lead us into some really good horrific or really bad horrific <laughs> video games well i'm kind of a scaredy cat when it comes to playing horror games i can't really uh play them by myself the modern games because they're so scary there's so there's so many jump scares in modern horror games that i can't take it you're so much part of that what's going on you yeah. know so i would have to start from the beginning for me personally my very first video game that i ever got that my mom bought me was a castlevania game and uh those aren't scary games. They're just more horror-themed. They're kind of based on the universal monster uh, genre, like classic mummy. Werewolf. Frankenstein, yeah. yeah. And you fight those monsters with a guy that carries a whip, basically. Right. And he whips whips his way through a castle. Something about those games 
really captured my imagination when I was a kid. I played almost every one of them. I could not put them down. I still play those to this day, those old Castlevania games. Now, I think I'm confusing Castlevania. Wasn't there like a video game too? Was it called Altered States or something? Altered Beast. Altered, Altered Beast. Beast, yeah. Okay, so I was confusing that with Castlevania. Yeah, Castlevania, you're basically fighting Dracula and his vampire hordes in his castle. Basically, you just go through the castle, and your main mission is to kill Dracula. And uh, the best part about it is that they based a Netflix TV series on the show. There's oh, okay. been three seasons of Castlevania, the television show, which actually connects to the other part of our podcast, but it's probably the best video game adaption that... There's not that many good video game adaptions. I'm sure Ricky can attest to that. Uh, yeah, um, never watched Double Dragon. Yeah. What what system did that come out? Like what, what... it started out on, on Nintendo, Nintendo, the old '80s Nintendo. Then it graduated to Super Nintendo, Genesis, and uh, PlayStation. And oh, so it just it's, kept it's going. everywhere. It's yeah. classic. Yeah. It's just timeless. But they haven't they haven't made a game in like over six years. Oh, okay. we were at uh, Comic Con though a few years back in New York City. Yeah, and they had a demo of a. It was by the made by the creator, right? And yeah. It's basically the successor, the creator of Symphony of the Night, the most famous Castlevania. He was at, at the Comic Con, and we played his uh, video game. It was called Bloodstained. Was pretty addicting. Yeah, and I actually got that game when it came out, and, it, and it's basically Castlevania. You can call it Castlevania if you wanted to. It's basically the same thing. Those games are great too, because even if you aren't into the horror motifs, like it, it doesn't matter because they're just good fun. Yeah, they're basically skill based. You have to be good at, at reactionary button pressing and and jumping and whipping and yeah, they're, they're my favorite games. Yeah, skill based kind yeah. of horror esque. They're hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, as far as, like, horror horror, I think the first game I ever played that was horror was either Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Yeah, Resident anyway. Evil. Yeah. I, I actually didn't get into them until uh, just recently. The very first Resident Evil I played was the seventh one, and I, I couldn't play it alone. I had to actually get Steph you know, I had, to, I had to get you <laughs> into the room because I couldn't. I was too scared. It's, it's basically based on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You, you come across a house in the woods, and you go in the house, and there's nothing going on. You just witness stuff happening just whole it's, it's, it's being in a haunted house yeah in a way. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of jump it. scares and i couldn't take it i, I had to be with and somebody it's like a gross house like you come across garbage bags and dirty pots and pans and dead gross things it looks like a house that white trash people lived in <laughs> <laughs> jump yeah. scares yeah yeah, jump scares. Them, yeah yeah i heard the resident evils got <clears throat> scarier as time yeah. went on i I think they're ranked right up there. As oh, yeah. They're, the, they're probably the premier horror game. Yeah. I was always a Silent Hill guy. Yes, me too. I've never played yeah. Silent Hill, so I can't I, attest to that. I liked Resident Evil. I did. But after 3, it's kind of like the movie series where it's like, okay, is this where are we going yeah now right. it all blends like, together it's still it's still scary it still brings out cool monsters and all these things but for me silent hill i like the idea of you're not even like a policeman or, or military or anything you know you're not not that every character in resident evil is but like silent hill it's i don't know the original silent hill for me i, I love the setting yeah based on centralia old abandoned coal town in Pennsylvania that's been on fire since the 1960s. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I just love that idea. You know, nowadays, quite a few people know about Centralia and everything, but back then, nobody had heard of it, you know, and <laughs> and it caused uh, so many people to research it and visit it. I, I guess, like, local authorities, where it is in Pennsylvania now, they have to worry about keeping people out. There, the ground can just open up and swallow you, so... Lovely. Like, yeah, you know. <laughs> you burned to death I'm guessing <laughs> it's yeah I mean it's it's crazy I guess there's still like three or four people that live there or something Why? still they refuse to leave your house could just become a crater any day because this town's just slowly collapsing in on itself yeah I don't know it's pretty creepy but I just love how Silent Hill kind of adapted that and it's a real life hellscape they just kind of embellished on it I never played the game but I am familiar with Pyramid Head what is that Pyramid Head is so Basically, the town is it's caught between dimensions, uh, and it's it's due to what the residents who were in charge of the town did a long time ago. But they they basically opened up a portal to somewhere else, and Pyramid Head it, it's like a you know hellish place where they opened up the portal to obviously, and mm -hmm. um, Pyramid Head's like uh, he's not in charge of everything. He's just this big monster. This his job is to torture 
essentially. He's kind of, I guess you could say there's parallels to Nemesis. Oh, okay, yeah. I've I, I played the third Resident yeah. Evil, so I'm yeah, kind of familiar with that. Yeah, he's kind of like, I mean, it's not the exact same thing, but yeah, I mean, it's yeah. pretty parallel to that. So it's like an unstoppable force you can't really <laughs> fight against? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's like 12 feet tall with the giant pyramid <laughs> thing. He has this huge machete. I love the design thing. of it, though. It's so cool. So his head yeah. is literally shaped like a pyramid? He has, kind of. They, I think they took inspiration from old medieval and early Renaissance torture devices, you know, mm-hmm. to make it, and it's just this big pyramid shape box on his head. Yeah, it's kind of almost like Cenobite from Hellraiser in oh, a okay. sense, I was you just know? thinking that. He could fit right in with them. <laughs> you know, that's that's kind of his thing. But yeah, I, I do enjoy Resident Evil too. I just, I, I would say at least the first Silent Hill to me, it was like way more kind of a unique thing because you, you had to peel away the layers as the game went on and figure it out. You weren't just drop an apocalypse. If you're stuck there and you're trying to figure out where you are and why everything's happening the way it is. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. I like stuff with some mystery to it. I think the mystery is actually a little more frightening sometimes than seeing the actual monsters exactly. themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's what it was for Silent Hill with me. It wasn't so much the demons flying around as much as not seeing the demons and hearing the demons. <laughs> yeah, and just all of a sudden you could be in an empty room and then things flip. Suddenly you see what that room looks like in the other dimension and you're kind of there basically and it's filled with the most horrifying creatures you've ever seen in your life and they're out to kill you and it could happen at any moment and that's what made to me the game more urgent you were really trying to solve every puzzle and get out of every room because at any moment everything could flip and you're running for your life so yeah i always thought that was cool what do you got stuff you got any video games that scared you as a even growing up, maybe some old school Well, it's funny stuff. you mentioned Altered Beast. That kind of scared me a little bit as a kid because we didn't have a video game system, so we'd go to Pizza Hut, and their yeah. Altered Beast <laughs> would be at Pizza Hut. And that was like the only video game in there. It was so exciting. But I would say, I think for jump scares and stuff, it was a Nintendo game, like Friday the 13th, and you were going along a road, and it was like you'd have the map of Crystal Lake, and then you'd... Did you have the good music, too? I don't know. Like do you the remember 8-bit? the music? I don't know if they had, if they translated the music. They, I think they did translate the music into eight bit. Yeah, I think they did. But that was uh, that game was so frustrating. It was very like you didn't know game. what you were doing throughout the whole the whole game. It was very obtuse. You didn't know where you were going. You would get lost. But there were guides that could help you. I remember back then. I remember there was a remember there was a, a, a number you could call a Nintendo hotline. And you oh could, my you god, could, the Nintendo hotline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You talked to an actual person and they knew all the answers. To, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I wanted that job so bad. That is one of the coolest jobs, yeah. Nintendo hotline. Did they had to study every Nintendo game so they can answer every kid's question about Nintendo. Didn't mm-hmm. they used to have like a cheat code magazine too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm wondering Genie if the hotline... Game Genie, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Jason would pop out from anywhere. You would be in a house. He was really hard to fight and you'd get stones or knives that you'd just chuck at him. And he kind of like dashed back and forth, and you'd miss him a lot. And then if you did hit him, it wasn't didn't seem like it did anything. Right. So when if you actually killed him or did something, it felt like a huge accomplishment because you're literally hitting the buttons as fast as you could. Yeah. You'd just be you frustrated would, and scared too. You had like six or seven counselors, and you would go through so many of them quickly. Camp counselors. Once one of them would die, you'd go to the next counselor. And I think you had to fight his mom at the end, right? His mom's head would float around. <laughs> or maybe I'm thinking of something else. I don't know. Our mom's head. I think you were thinking of Pee Wee Herman's Playhouse. <laughs> maybe. All Saturday morning stuff yeah. kind of mixed in together. I would have to say one of the... I mean, yeah, I, I played you know Atari and Nintendo in the earlier generations of video game consoles and stuff. But outside of Castlevania, I didn't really play too many horror games until I got Sega Saturn. The much maligned system that nobody remembers anymore, mm-hmm. but <laughs> kind of like the there, Turbo Graphics. Yeah. yeah, but there was a game on it called The Mansion of Hidden Souls that I had as Not a kid. Familiar. Well, do you guys, any of you, remember the game Mist? Yeah, I remember the show. They might have done the something Mist, like with movie. that because Mist yeah. was like in the mid '90s. It was like everywhere. It was yeah. a huge game. Yeah, 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 it was, and I had that as well, and I love that game, which is why I got uh, Mansion of Hidden Souls. Uh, it didn't. I guess it did fairly well in Japan, but it didn't really do anything here. And I got it just secondhand. I came across it in a shop, and I mean, there was only like five games for the Saturn, so I was like, <laughs> "Oh, a new game!" You know, it's like Mist, where you wind up in an abandoned 
mansion, and each room contains a soul. And you're trying to solve this mystery of oh, what's going on. That sounds I familiar. Yeah, I think I do too. <laughs> and, yeah, and well, Brian, you know, um, you've probably you when we were kids, you'd probably I've seen probably me playing seen it. it. Yeah, it was not a particularly hard game, but for some reason, I it took me forever to finally get through it. I just it, it, nothing about it was like super scary. You know, the ghosts like weren't scary or anything, but there was a lot of kind of occult stuff in it. Or I guess what some people would say is occult stuff, you know, like tarot cards and all these things. And I don't know the the atmosphere and it was creepy. Yeah. And for some reason, I'll never forget that. If you go back and play it now, I mean, graphically, it's like so terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it probably wouldn't hold up anymore. But I thought the concept was really cool. Yeah. They've come a long way with video games. Even my partner had a Nintendo DS, and when they first came out, mm. and it was a pink one, and she mm. had gotten a game called Dementium Two. And that's just haunted locations and scary bosses and noises and jump scares. Mm -hmm. I remember watching it on her little DS screen going, that is horrifying. Like, how are you playing this? Why aren't you playing, like, Mario Brothers? (laughs) Such a punk. I never knew they had, like, adult horror games on DS. They do. Yeah. I didn't even know that either. I was like, wow, why would you get this game? This is crazy. I was also looking at, you know, speaking of newer games, there's a game that came out maybe like four or five years ago. It's for PCs. It's called Soma. I've heard of it. I never played it, though. I've heard of it, too. Yeah. Um, it's underwater, right? Or yeah. Like something I, else. Yeah, well, it, it kind of. It, it does kind of have like a similar sort of Bioshock thing. By the way, Bioshock. Oh, yeah, Bioshock. Great horror <laughs> game. But, um, but it's... It, remember that movie Virus I was talking about in the last episode I was in? Yeah. It's kind of the same concept where you wind up on this lab and everybody that was working there had their consciousness transferred into machines and apparently it was done really violently and to get through the game and to solve these puzzles and to get out a lot of these people you have to like unplug the machines they're in or cannibalize them you have to kill them (laughs) wow (laughs) like it's yeah or the game's just not going to progress you'll unplug one and they'll just be like hey you know and as you slowly hear them fading out they're like you're killing me but they're already dead you know like their bodies on the floor like five feet away so are you really it's like are we more than our thoughts kind of a thing you know are we killing them or are we just killing a copy of them it's like a psychological video game that yeah concept actually reminds me of the game i'm playing right now it's called vampire it came out a couple years ago do you remember yeah that looked really good yeah basically you're uh i think it's like the late 1800s you're in england london and you wake up you're in a pile of bodies and you don't know how you got there and you're thirsting for blood and you end up killing your sister, drinking her blood, and you don't know what's going on. And basically, you're a doctor, and you're trying to figure out why you became the way you are. And while you're doing this, there's a plague going around London. So a lot of people are dying. It's very appropriate for nowadays, you know? Yeah. yeah. So so it reminds me of that concept because um, you can basically kill any character in the game. You can drink their blood, but you take them out of the game. So you take out all of their missions they were going to give you. You take out, like, all their dialogue they're no longer in the game and they no longer add to the experience of the game yeah so it's up to you if you want to do that you don't have to it's it's very interesting yeah. if you have a chance to play it's called vampire with a y instead of ire it's yr y-R-E. yeah it's very interesting and it's very cool that is on my list yeah. i i have been meaning to check yeah it definitely out. check it out the other game i was thinking of was doom doom was, oh i was thinking of oh, that yeah. too yeah that's like an old game and modern game there's yeah. modern versions of it and it's well, such a that scared me when i was a kid because of uh the satanic implications yeah. of it, yeah. you know, seeing the upside down crosses and the the pentagrams and stuff. From growing up religious, it was kind of like a like whoa! I can't believe they're getting away with this. I'm so used to like Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog, and now I'm killing demons on Mars. But it was very cool. Yeah. Well, they're releasing a movie, aren't they? It's the Dune movies coming out. Oh no! I mean Doom. 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 Like, D O O M. Yeah. Okay. I'm going. Yeah. I don't remember. But you are correct. Yeah. Okay. Doom, Doom movie. <laughs> Yeah, they did a Doom movie, though. That was yeah. pretty bad, the right? Rock. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've seen that. And Carl yeah. Urban. Um, yeah, it, it was not. It was no way. I was speaking of video <laughs> adaptation <laughs> yeah. movies. Um, but Doom also, it was one of the few video games to actively scare people who never played it. Yeah, too. exactly. I mean, growing up, that was 
all over the news for a period of time. Oh, yeah. you know? And then came back again when I was in high school when you had uh, Columbine. Oh, yeah. You know, they brought that up. Yeah, and they got blamed and, for yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah sort of specter of it like never left you know people still yeah. play to this you know you can play doom on a calculator yeah like i have a uh, one of those ti 83 calculators and i can just plug it into my computer and download doom on it and play it if i wanted to it's just yeah it's just like everywhere yeah it's crazy it's yeah. it's everywhere you know oh. um it's endeared a lot longer than probably oh yeah they just had the a games. version come out this year and it's, it's just as good it, it's even better so it's like the most I would say the most metal game yeah like it's <laughs> the epitome of like a the side of a van the heavy metal yeah. painting you would see on the side of a van I miss much, those vans yeah. when we were kids demons you know, and guns vans. Yeah. explosions <laughs> or like Definitely. a barbarian on top of a mountain you guys skulls. have no idea what we're, we're talking about like, <laughs> sounds like doom <laughs> when you go to the state fair and you go into the haunted house and they have all that crazy graffiti or yeah. whatever it is the, yeah. the drum yeah. it makes it look so scary it does yeah and then you get in there and it's just this little train ride and then yeah, something it's ridiculous. just pops out <laughs> <laughs> you get whipped around and doors suddenly open and then another thing pops up and then you're outside yeah but and, i think this sounds much scarier in theory i know but it just reminded me because on <laughs> the, the <van>. outside <laughs> Yeah, on the outside is that crazy artwork that made it look uh, so amazing. It always terrified me as a yes. kid, the artwork. I would refuse to go into those rides because of that artwork. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. The last game I can actually add to this is something I saw a YouTuber playing. <laughs> because I don't play game systems anymore since I became an old lady. But I should. I actually should. But it was called Emily Wants to Play. You guys oh, heard I know of this? that one. I've yeah. heard of it, yeah. The graphics aren't that crazy or anything, but... I was watching a YouTuber play it, and she comes upon this little ghost girl, and you have to basically, when you see her, you have to freeze until she disappears. And the game is you essentially trying to find her through the house as the clock strikes three o'clock in the morning every time, and you have to try to find her. And, and then do what? I don't know the point of the game, <laughs> and it's weird because she actually ended up down in a tunnel under the house that she discovered and this vampirous, scary, zombie-looking chick killed her. And it was not the little ghost. So apparently there is a ghost and there's actually that thing was Emily in the basement or in the tunnel underneath the house. Oh. So I, I'm not sure of the point because she didn't get very far. She kept dying. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the fact that this little creepy Japanese-looking ghost girl would just show up and she'd be, like, hanging on a wall or she'd just appear out of the darkness it's a weird game yeah. but people play weird games yeah they, that's yeah popular on youtube and twitch uh playing horror games like that like yeah. slender man and uh yep what's the other one five nights at freddy's yeah yes. but the big one right now and actually beck you might take an interest in it is called phasmophobia mm. i've heard of this what's this about now it's a multiplayer game where you and however many of your friends can play as ghost hunters and you take ghost hunting jobs and have all these missions to accomplish in these houses that you're trying to collect evidence in. But the thing is, is if you're in the house too long or around the ghost too long, you kind of like lose your sanity. Ooh. And when that happens, it basically kills you. But everybody's playing it right now. It's PC game. Yeah, it's a PC game, but people are saying it's like the most genuinely terrifying game they've played in like oh, ever. Wow. wow. I mean, I've seen some clips from it. Some of the some of the creations they have on that thing are pretty nuts, but but yeah, that's kind of the big one taking the world by storm. My nephews love Five Nights at Freddy's and Yeah. I I, I can't I can't get into it. Yeah, it's to me it's I've never been like you know how like like, like clowns or like things like yeah. that they never that whole like twisted kitty stuff to yeah. freak you out or like the mm. Chucky doll thing. like a teddy bear right? never, yeah, it's yeah all sorts it's of like Chuck E. Like, cheese like, uh, things Chuck E. Cheese animatronic monsters yeah. that come to life that's at what... night <laughs> that stuff never freaked me out so yeah. it, you know it kind of made me laugh like remember Critters yeah. 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 It's like, that didn't, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those were more funny than anything. Yeah, it's like her gremlins or any of that. It's, yeah, that kind of stuff never made me afraid, but my nephews will jump through the roof uh, when they play that game sometimes. <laughs> it seems to be wildly popular because under that YouTuber that was playing that Emily game, someone had said, hey, you have to check out the Five Nights. Oh, right. And I'm yeah. like, what is that? 
<laughs> so I googled it and saw what you're talking about and saw a little weird looking vampire teddy bear. It's a very very simple game and the guy that created it is like a millionaire. Yes. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. You know, one game that turned out not to be a horror game, but I think kind of falls into the category of a horror game is uh you ever hear of a game called Gone Home? Yes, this game is amazing. Yeah, Brian, yeah. Why, don't, why don't you give the synopsis on it? Um, basically, you belong to a family with a younger sister, and uh, you go home. You're, are you coming home from college? Yeah, I you think so. You come home from college, and it's kind of like a stormy night. You get home, and the home is empty. And you're trying to figure out like where everyone went. And there's little clues everywhere throughout the house, and you can't get to certain parts of the house until you do like find keys or... Kind of like Home Alone. Yeah, kind of like Home Alone, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to ruin the ending for anybody who hasn't played it, but it's it's very touching at the end Yeah, it, what happens. And... It tells this whole encompassing story of the whole family, and I love how it, it takes place in, like, 1995. Yeah, there's a lot of 90s references in it, a lot of yeah. uh, grunge rock and riot oh, girl okay. music oh, and nice. uh, <laughs> X-Files type stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's like, once again, kind of like the Mansion of Lost Souls game. The setting is kind of creepy, but you're yeah, really unraveling this story. You don't know what happened. Like, you come home, you told your family you're coming home, and everyone's gone, so you have no idea where they went, and it's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Because there's so many possibilities, but what actually happens is very nice. Yeah, and it's almost sort of they mundane. Went to eat pizza. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. She almost lost her mind. We just went to get pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's almost sort of mundane. And it's award winning. It's like it didn't win yeah. like a ton of awards. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. I didn't even um, realize there was video game awards. <laughs> but anybody out there that that uh, wants to try one of the games we're talking about, that would probably be the yeah, one. Yeah. It's it's, a, it's available on a lot of different marketplaces. You it's don't very have to worry. Short, yeah. yeah, and you don't have to worry about getting scared. It's not that expensive. Right. It's just it's, atmospheric. Yeah. Okay. And you'll kind of tear up at the end. Yeah. You're not going to get any bloody. Horror, no. jump scare, but you always think you are. Yeah, oh, okay. you're playing it. That's the yeah. thing, mm. and and it's kind of you know when you're a kid and you're alone in in the house at night, like everyone's asleep, or maybe your parents went out, and you know you're preteen, so everything is still kind of, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you're still kind of afraid of the dark and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that feeling. You're walking through your parents' house alone. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of put me back in like my thirteen year old shoes. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. playing that game I don't know yeah. it's yeah I think I, I think a lot of people get something out of it yeah it's one of those things that the less you know the better it is if we explain it more then they're making me want to try this yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a very very cool game I am not a player of video games anymore like you I think the last video game I played was like 1999 it was probably Tomb Raider because that was my favorite. Oh, yeah. I don't know when that came out, but I was playing around, it in 1990. Around that time. Yeah, 96, 97, 98, 97, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think 96, yeah. I liked how you had to solve the puzzles, and that had some suspense to a lot of it, and people would pop out and shoot at you, and I liked the adventures. You'd go on, like, right. I wouldn't it. label it as scary, though. But there's a part in there that was really scary. Brian and I were talking about this earlier. We can't remember if it was from the first video game or the second but she gets into this it looks like a prison area but everything's dark and black and you see bars on cages and then you hear this howling and it ends up being like these yeti creatures you know it's it's actually quite frightening wow i freaked out when i was playing it i would kind of panic when i get into that situation and it took me a while to figure out how to take care of everything you know <laughs> really just go over to brian's and he's like if he says he's got a new game do you want to see it and i'll watch him i'll just drink beer and watch him play <laughs> <laughs> what about um i saw you playing was it a plague tale lost innocence or something like that oh my god yeah i forgot about that i, I didn't finish it but it's basically it takes place during the plague i think during the renaissance i'm pretty sure in france you and your little brother are on the run so there's something up with your little brother you might he might be sick or he might not be sick you might have the cure but people are after him it's pretty cool but the the point of it is there's a lot of parts in the game where you have to like um avoid rats because it's the plague you know there's there's swarms of rats and the only way to avoid them is to have fire with you or to throw fire so it's like kind of like a puzzle game like that where you have to find out where to go you know yeah Use the, using the fire and trying to avoid being succumbed by rats yeah it's, it was it was really cool I, just, I never finished it so i can't say if it's great you know I don't, yeah. even, I don't even know how far i got into it but <laughs> it was cool from when it what it laid well i will find any excuse to fit my favorite video game series into a list and um i'm gonna do it now because it did take a lot of its themes from 
I guess kind of like Lovecraftian horror, but it is the Mass Effect series. It's really sci-fi. These giant machines, it's sort of like an army of Cthulhus starting to end the universe. <laughs> Synthetic Cthulhus. Yeah. yeah. That series, I mean, pretty much everyone has played at least one of the games at this point. But... What's a Cthulhu? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Cthulhu for $500. <laughs> Cthulhu is... Uh, Man, he's a Lovecraftian. Are you talking god. about H.P. Lovecraft? That, yeah, like that, that storyline. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd be here all day, but he basically is one of the elder gods that ends the world. That when he wakes up, if you know a little bit about, like he's he's covered in tentacles and possibly miles tall. Are they from outer space? In the game, they are. Okay, that would make sense with tentacles and all that. Yeah. So basically, an alien space race is coming in to destroy the earth yep and it's and there's just like no hope there's no reasoning with them because there's tons of points throughout all three games where you're having a dialogue with them but the thing is is these creatures are like the repository of all knowledge that's been accumulated like they are light years ahead of you in intelligence and so trying to fundamentally reason with them they go no we've been through this literally millions of times before oh, you shit. think you're the first you're you're not we reset the universe every 50,000 years you could try anything you want but it doesn't matter your end is coming well that's and... just depressing <laughs> <laughs> you'd think so but the games are actually all about hope and relationships and how learning to rely on the people that care about you loving and trusting you know your friends and having faith in them kind of stops the universe from ending mm. because there are, in the third game like it really is the event horizon scenario like they have you know maybe a few years before everything's over with that war is going on in every corner of the universe to try to stop it people are dying whatever there are certain parts of the game where you might have to make a decision. One of your crewmates, you might have to sacrifice them and their entire race to save everybody else. You know, only if you're really smart and you've played the game 700 times like I have, <laughs> can you kind of get around that and everybody gets to go home happy. Let's start talking about scary TV series or series is... <laughs> Seriouses. 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 Seriouses with a, uh, I bet you it's not is because it sounds... Pretty bad, doesn't it? Well, it's like <laughs> moose, meese, right? Meese, <laughs> series. Okay, what you got, stuff? I haven't seen a lot of the ones recently, so I can't say I have huge memories. Like I can't just talk about an episode; they're pretty far back, and I don't watch much of the series now. Just a few. Oh, good. So you took the classic because I kind of came into the modern side of it. So this might be a, a good list for all of us. So just to say, my all-time favorite TV show was X-Files. I think with all the classic ones, X-Files has always been my favorite. Love it. I've seen everything. Um, Even the, the new reboots mm -hmm. of it? Yeah. Were they as good, do you think? I liked them. A few were good, yeah. I, I love the X-Files, too. That's my favorite. One of my favorite TV shows and probably my favorite uh, horror show. I wouldn't call it a horror show, but there were horror episodes, you know? Yeah, paranormal, mm -hmm. supernatural. Yeah, it's my favorite of that type, and uh, I think what they do best, I'm not a big fan of the ongoing alien stuff that they do. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a fan of the Monster Week type episodes that they do. Those are more horrifying. My favorite episode that I've watched a bunch of times is The School Council is... A secretly Satanic. Do you mm -hmm. guys remember that one? Yeah. Yeah, didn't they base that on it's an actual... Based off of well, I, I don't know how much it was actual, but a story from the 80s, like about a nursery it's school like or something? California or something? I, I, I yeah. haven't heard that, but it, it might be possible. They, they did there do that with definitely. a lot of shows. Yeah. But that, that one's like an actual horror movie to watch. It's very... It's kind of depressing, actually. A lot of the episodes are very depressing because they're always overcast, always raining, you know, they have the long yeah. black overcoats. <laughs> it's very 90s. That one episode is uh, my favorite. I always go back to it. I can't say the name of the episode because it's in German. I, I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> no, okay. But another cool thing about X-Files is there's a lot of episodes where they mention Syracuse in it, which was always really awesome yeah, to hear. Yeah, cool. Yeah, which ties ties into, I'm sure, another one you have. Twilight Zone? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Rod Serling was from Utica, was it? Mm hmm Which is a city 45 minutes from here. So, actually, there's a story. I don't know if we mentioned that Brian is my brother. 
No, we didn't. I no. just thought we'd keep him mysterious. And, and <laughs> Ricky but, is my nephew. Yeah, our dad... I don't know if you remember this story, Brian, but dad supposedly wrote yeah, a letter to Rod re- Serling. Vaguely, I don't really remember the and, details, but... Yeah, he had a, a whole idea for a show, and my dad sent the idea for the show to him, and he got a reply, but they didn't accept the episode. They said that a lot of people We're give doing, ideas, yeah. you know, and that they can't just do that i guess i think it's also nods to the fact that i mean a lot of people might not realize it but we have such an unusual amount of both alien and ghost sightings Mm -hmm. here, especially around like the central new york area and so i think that kind of played quite a bit into it and i'm sure i mean all the nods to the past creators that horror always tends to do i'm I'm sure that had something to do with it well syracuse was considered a psychic city it was a highly saturated with psychics and then you had stephen king that would go to utica isn't that where rod sterling was from was it utica or did you say ithaca i can't remember utica he would write his novels in utica but he would get all shit-faced and get all <laughs> yeah. well, utica is a is a dying city yeah. well it's the yeah. armpit of the world i'm sorry uticans <laughs> if you're listening i apologize but we know the truth. You got some good food there. <laughs> you do. Very good food. Utica mm-hmm. Greens, mm-hmm. great chicken, chicken riggies. Great, yeah. great bakeries. Yeah. 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 yeah, really good bakeries. So we're well, trying to make up for the fact that we called you the armpit of the world over there. <laughs> <laughs> they have at least a sense of humor. So what's the joke about Utica? Oh, the last one leaves, turn out the lights. Yeah, the last one who leaves, turn out the lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, unfortunately a lot of up here is like that now. Um, but at the same time, it, I, it's one thing I kind of love about living up here is uh, we're <laughs> I mean to be quite honest I think we're going to kind of mirror what the rest of the country looks like in another five years so I mean we're way ahead of the curve you know yeah. <laughs> we're not even going to notice you know the whole world's going to explode and we're going to be like what was that noise <laughs> the Simpsons you know? movie we're going to be in the in the bubble like, yeah. Completely <laughs> cut off from everyone else. Well, it kind of leads me into The Stand. They had a little oh, yeah. for TV Is that series. The 90s? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they but did I, one with. They didn't do another one, did they? I, I want to say they did another one. I know, I the, know. they did one with Rob Lowe. That yeah. one is great. Oh. That when, one is when really was that? good. In the 90s. The Rob Lowe one? I think so. Yeah. The one with Gary Sinise. That's the. Yeah, they're both in it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's a huge cast. Yeah. It's an yeah. enormous cast. That's a great pick, though. They did that a lot back then. Remember It, too? Remember yeah. They mm-hmm. did that with It. Yeah. They made that into a miniseries. Oh, yeah. Stephen King seemed to do that a lot. Yeah, his, his that's, what stuff. I, yeah that's what I meant. But yeah. that was a great one. Yeah, I uh, I really have to say, since we're talking about the 90s, anybody remember Tales from the Crypt? Oh, oh yeah. 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 You know, I mean, Crypt Keeper. That was an event yeah. when that a lot came. Of people on. don't realize it, but that's based on a comic book. Yeah. yeah, you know, from the '50s that got banned. That comic book was the reason why we uh, had censorship from the '60s on in comic books. They thought they were corrupting youth with all the violent imagery of of people getting murdered and vampires and Ooh. stuff like that and hmm. ghouls. And, yeah. Wow. It brought a lot of bad stuff down on the comic book industry. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't Not, either. It wasn't their fault. It was the, the senator that passed the law, mm. or that went after him. That was his fault. But wow. anyways, it was, it was a great show. Yeah, I loved, I, I think he'd annoy me now, but the Crypt Keeper back then was great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it kind of brought back that old serial, you know, yeah. that type of deal, like an early TV. I mean, my grandfather, you know, being one of the co-creators of the Baron Damone show. Right. And uh, that whole, you know, that was yeah, that like, was a big deal. With, a, with a host that introduces the show and yeah, everything. Yeah, makes jokes, yeah. funny skits. I mean, by the time Crypt Keeper, you know, and the, that whole show came around, like, you didn't have that on TV anymore. No. So that was... I think that put HBO on the map, too. I don't think we would yeah. have as much that good HBO fun. shows. <laughs> yeah. Kind of started that whole HBO uh, doing their own shows and everything. Yeah, that mm-hmm. and Spawn. See, oh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> your dad didn't need Rod Serling to make a mark. No, it, there are so many people that I meet that remember that show because they're an older generation. This is way before I was born. My dad, he worked at a local television studio, and so they used to like to do entertainment, you know, Saturday movies, and they would come up with their own skits. They created their own show, and it got hugely popular. He had a lot of funny stories. They had a record that was out. Because it was local, it was really huge here, and it did spread to other states, mm-hmm. and the record got 
further. Do you think that Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, was kind of like a spinoff of that? Every city had their own local... And every station in every city did. Yeah, they had their own little skit thing that they did. It was just what they did back then. Right. Um, And a lot of those shows they lost because there was a fire at Channel 9. It was all lost. There's only a few things left. And they actually have that on YouTube. So if anyone is interested, they could look up Baron Dumont. And, oh, um, I'm sure they're going to be running the YouTube yeah. looking up Baron de <laughs> Well, there's actually... It's cheesy. There's, I wish I could remember his name, but there was actually a gentleman who uh, was really into the Baron de show, and he reached out to me on social media. He wrote a book about all of the local, like, Central New York shows like that, mm-hmm. and obviously... Baron Damone was a big part, and he has a lot of the merchandise and stuff, and has his own YouTube channel that has like interviews with, uh, unfortunately none with with Grandpa, but mm-hmm. some of the other people involved with the show. So he's really gone a long way to preserve it, and uh, you know there's not that much left, but what is left uh, hopefully will be around for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Going on to more TV series, the other one I loved as a kid was Friday the 13th, the series. Yeah. Do you remember that one? And was that from Canada? I just feel like that I think wasn't, it was. wasn't ours, really. Yeah. It was, I'm not exactly sure. It kind of fell into a weird realm of shows. There was a bunch of kind of... Like, remember how they had RoboCop, the show? Mm-mm. Yeah. And like, like they, uh, seriously, and there was... There was like a Beauty and the Beast show. I remember that. Oh, I used I to remember watch that. it. It's just like a weird <laughs> Phantom of the Opera kind of thing. Mm. I think there was a lot more creativity on TV back then. <laughs> yeah, let's make a show out of it. I don't really think that happens as often anymore. But That's true. And they all came out around the same time. Like the Hitchhiker. Remember The Hitchhiker? Oh, yeah. The movie. Or there was The Hitcher. No, the, the, movie, hitchhiker. the Hitchhiker. It was a show. I think it was oh, HBO. Yes. Or... yes. No, now I remember. Yeah. yeah. Kind of graphic. A little bit of pornography in it. Light porn. <laughs> I don't know. Very I don't remember. This. We I remember, remember. I, remember I didn't grow up. Yeah, we yeah. didn't have HBO or oh, cable. Okay. Or uh, we stole sugar. It. Yeah, we stole it too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we stole it. I'm probably gonna get in so much Me trouble too. for saying that. But we don't have your last name. Don't worry. <laughs> That's a show I haven't thought about in a long time, though. I've got a show that I used to love, and now I don't care about anymore. It's The Walking Dead. Oh, <laughs> oh I stopped watching that show for the past couple of seasons. I just gave up on it. But I used to love that show. We used to buy the seasons before they came out because, of course, we don't have cable. It was just like stretching it out for too long. And nothing would happen, and they would go through the same exact yep. thing over and over again. They would like find a place to settle, Safe. make friends with people, and then a bigger fish would come into the into always, the pond. Always, and they would have to deal with that. It just went on for too long. Kind of lost interest in it, but. People are saying it's good again, so I don't know if I, I should go back. I liked the last season. I thought it was actually really surprisingly but, good. Yeah, but Brian's right. They just keep stretching It's the same story over, over and over, over again. Over. Yeah, yeah I mean, way. I agree with Steph. I did watch the newest season. I'm kind of like, what do I do? I'm at this point. It's like, I feel like I, I, I started it. You invested so much yeah, time into it been... that you have to see it through, but mm-hmm. yeah. I think... It's like a weight off your shoulders when you say no more. No like, more. I'm not going to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm quitting gonna, you, Walking <laughs> Dead. Gonna... <laughs> Anyone remembered either the original or the remake or reboot or whatever of The Outer Limits? Uh, I never yeah. watched it. I know oh, about it. But... So good. It's basically a Twilight Zone yeah. type yeah. show, right? Yeah. 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 It just uh, it just lacked a charismatic host. Mm. Of course. <laughs> That that was the difference. But what was the other? To go back to Twilight Zone and Rod Serling. What was the other show he did in the seventies? Mm. Oh, uh, something gallery. Like was it Nightmare Gallery? Yeah, yeah I think it was something. Nightmare Gallery. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of the same thing. I didn't. I've seen maybe like a couple episodes. Every of episode like, I ever watched with, of that always dealt with Satan for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Satan was like the the main theme of every episode I've ever seen of that show. Oh, I never boy. saw that one. What about uh, Satan was very popular in the seventies. A lot of a lot of movies, yeah, satanic <laughs> movies, like mm-hmm. exploitation movies. What about uh, horror soap operas? Dark Shadows. Oh, yeah. I was just going to mention Dark Shadows. Yeah. I never watched it. Oh God, I was addicted to it when it no, came out of the Sci Fi Channel. I don't know why, because I go back and watch it. Well, now this is a funny story, but when I worked at Twilight Book and Games, which is a comic book store, there was a man that would come in. That I would get a few weird characters that would come in every day, and I'm pretty sure their 
mental. So I had to deal with a couple people that were just so funny because of their mental issues. So this guy would come in and he'd tell me every day about how he wanted to take Dark Shadows. He thinks that Dark Shadows and Star Trek should have combined a show together. <laughs> oh boy. Whoa. I think those are his two favorite shows. Yeah. And so he just thought these characters need to meet each other. <laughs> Somehow it was his fantasy. And I found out later this guy was getting in trouble for stalking women up at, at the university. Oh, nice. Oh. But he seemed kind of harmless to me. I just think he just would get infatuated with something and then just persist, but not be violent or anything and just annoy people. And uh, the other guy that used to come in <laughs> <laughs> would wear like a Batman suit out of nowhere. Like he would come in with this, <laughs> with a like an awesome Batman suit, and he would make it. Himself. Sure, it wasn't actually Batman. Was <laughs> he wasn't. He wasn't there to entertain any. But I'm sure that like kids would go up, Mom, I want to get my picture taken with Batman. Little did they know, it's the mentally ill guy. So yeah. what about Black Mirror? Oh yeah. Those are scary they are shows. They Those are. are very terrible because they're so true. I can see this happening. The one episode uh, where you rate everyone. Yes. Pretty much. That's social pretty much media, social media like, yeah. is now. That's why I kind of stay away from social media because mm -hmm. I think it would drive me crazy. But well, they were actually it, doing that rating system in China. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Cities, that's right. Yeah. So it is like an episode of Black Mirror happening. Yeah. So have you watched Black Mirror stuff? Just a couple episodes. Yeah. I never went through the whole thing. The Black Mirror kind of has a cousin called Channel Zero. You guys heard of Channel Zero? I've heard Zero? of Channel Zero, but I have not seen anything. It's more it. like instead of Netflix, it's on like a basic cable or maybe a little extended cable channel. Each season's based on something different. Yeah. But it's very similar, yet a little different. I think Black Mirror has a little... I don't know. I like that every episode's different, kind of like yeah. Twilight Zone. Yeah. So the, yeah. I have to bring up... I know it's like terrible, but... I have to bring up Are You Afraid of the Dark? Because that was, it's for oh, kids. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Goosebumps. I was thinking and that of, was the yeah, other Goosebumps. One. That was the other one. But I always thought Are You Afraid of the Dark was so cool because it was like this group of friends hanging around a campfire uh, yeah, every Friday that. night or Saturday yeah. night or whatever. And I wanted that. It was like <laughs> they were all trying to outdo each other with stories. It was kind of, I don't know. I, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I mean, obviously, like I said, it's for kids. You go well, yeah, but go and... even Goosebumps was a little scary at the time. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they they hold their own, I think. Yeah. You Just kind of like Unsolved Mysteries. It's a reality oh, God, yeah. show, <gasps> but it was horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> um, sightings. That just made yeah. me think of sightings. sightings. You guys remember oh, that show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was great. I'm, I'm pulling too many member berries off the tree, so I'm going to... Go silent for a bit, no, but I no. had to mention. Sightings. Did you have that on your list? I completely forgot about it until yeah, just I did now. too. That's yeah. that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I highly recommend sightings because if the episodes are really good, they're still hair raising. Mm -hmm. But if not, the special effects and everything is so bad, you'll at least have a good laugh. <laughs> but it goes either way, and and I just love that idea of like uh, unsolved mysteries for the paranormal, like uh, specifically, you know, because unsolved mysteries would do that kind of stuff sometimes, but. Yeah. They just revamped it. Yeah, but it's rock yeah. stackless. Yeah, that's true. But I, I don't know. I enjoyed it still. I, I, I haven't checked it out, so I'll, I'll reserve judgment. I benched through on Netflix. I did. And <laughs> actually, I went camping in one of the places, one of the UFO stories in Massachusetts, right after we watched the episode. Of nice. <laughs> Going to the Berkshires after I watched Unsolved Mysteries. American Horror Story. Oh, my God. Why did I forget about that? <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I was mean, coming up with a list, and I completely forgot about that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I haven't seen um, the past couple seasons. I think the last season I saw was the one with Lady Gaga in the hotel. That was the last one I saw. Oh, that was but a good one. That was a good one, yeah. I thought yeah. they were getting back to form with that one. But I think yeah. I'm the only person in the world who hasn't seen that show. I no. have not seen it. Oh, okay. They're all standalone yeah. seasons, right? Yes, they the stories are, are contained in that one different. season. Yeah, and some seasons are floppy. Like yeah. uh, True Detective. Oh, yeah. 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 The first season of that is... It's amazing. Yeah. Not only that, but it kind of a genuinely frightening story yeah yeah and, um yeah the subsequent seasons and whatnot yeah not so great mm -hmm. i loved uh the haunting of hill house i thought that was super good I that's probably the most recent finished that no no See, i i i started I watching it last year and then i couldn't finish it and i started watching it this halloween and i, I, I 
I'm still going through it. <laughs> I thought some of the designs of the ghosts or whatever were cool, but I thought it, it got a little gratuitous with the... It was like every scene had to be, oh my God, what's going to jump out at me? And it's like, I need a break mm -hmm. so you can develop the characters a little bit mm -hmm. and I can actually care about them. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. kind of got on my nerves after a while where it was like, Every time they open a freaking door, you know, they got to yeah. build it up with the suspense. But it's like, he's just going to the bathroom. <laughs> well, they, they jump scare here. Then they went in the opposite, what you're talking about. They went opposite with Bly Manor, which was just released. And yeah, Bly Manor, it was just too much story and not enough. Just people talking. Yeah, yeah you're just like, yeah. wow, we really are delving in. It is a beautiful place. but uh, <laughs> And it was it was a take on Turn of the Screw, which has been remade over and over uh, yeah. So, hmm, Hell House, sorry, I'll give it to you, but I'm only for the same reason that Rick said is I like what I could spot in the background, the different ghosts that I could catch. It was kind of like, where's Waldo for me? Yeah. I like the whole idea of where they're kids, you're seeing the portion when they're having their flashbacks, mm -hmm. and then you see that yeah, those how they are as complex adults, they all got issues, they're not all friendly with each other, and they all have to come back and deal with this. I don't know. I just kind of like that aspect of it. No, there were definitely good yeah. parts. To me, that's the thing is there was an, enough of a story that I saw that I wanted to see more. Mm -hmm. And it was just like when, you know, each episode was what? It was over 60 minutes, right? Most of them were like 80 minutes yeah. long or something. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you have 77 minutes of it, of just suspenseful music. Yeah. And it's like I'm not even like frightened or on the edge of my seat anymore. It's like. It's been going on the whole episode. It's like every time someone makes a sandwich, there's going to be a, you know, something <laughs> jumping out at you. And it's like, after a while, you're just like, I don't care. And that was what was kind of disappointing to me because, uh, yeah, I, I thought the characters, I bet they're cool people, but I wouldn't know, no. really, <laughs> except the what little I saw of them. So, I don't know. I have the terror on my list. Have you guys seen it's the terror? on my list to watch. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Gotta do it, guys. Yeah. And actually, again, each season is different. So I've watched two seasons so far. I think you guys would really enjoy the first season. And that's a group of soldiers, um, I want to say, way back in the day. And they mm. end up in the Antarctic, I believe. They yeah. get stuck. Oh, I gotta check it out. Oh, that's a good one. I think you two get, would love that one. Yeah. Season two... Uh, it was more based on Japan and Japanese kind of uh, folklore, oh, their cool. idea of a demon, yeah, okay. which was a geisha girl, mm -hmm. but it jumped and, and it was interesting. It was, it was, that one was more frightening as far as visually, even yeah. though there was some scary stuff in the first terror, but mm -hmm. both of them, I highly recommend the terror for sure. Yeah. I gotta check that out. Yeah. Eh? We haven't touched on horror comedy yet, really. And what about what we do in the yes. Shadows? Oh, yeah. Which is an awesome Brilliant. movie, by yes. the way. And I wish I thought of it in the last podcast. The show, though. The show. Was great. I oh, just yeah. pee my pants. I love it. It's What's so it called again? funny. What we do in the shadows. And it, it, it's no basically idea it a um, mockumentary, like a fake documentary about these vampires living in this. Uh, House. Four vampires picked Four. to live in a house. Yes. Yeah, it's like real world. Yeah, it is. Vampires. So yeah. it's kind of like it has that office feel, you know? Like it does. With the interviews and... Is it on Netflix or where is it? No. Uh, it's on Hulu. You can yeah, Hulu. And Hulu. Yeah, yeah. That's a great... That was on my list, too, what we do in oh, the shadows. Nice. Just because it gives some humor mm -hmm. and there's still some blood. Yeah. And yeah. The episode where they go out drinking with their, yes. like, their elder. And he eats like, a slice of pizza. <laughs> yeah, and just, like, projectile vomits himself. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite oh, episodes, actually. That was so <laughs> funny. It was such a I love a how they were drinking the blood of their victims that were already inebriated or on some kind of substance oh, yeah. so that they could feel high on ecstasy. <laughs> that one is just awesome. Yeah, I love that show. That show's so good. Nosferatu, N O S four A two, that is Stephen King's right. Joe Hill, yeah. Stephen King's son, did Nosferatu, and that one's pretty good. It's he, definitely fun. He also wrote Lock and Key, which is a new show. I, I like that. I haven't seen the show, but I'm familiar with the, the comic. Yeah, Lock and Key actually can be considered scary. Yeah, but yeah. I enjoyed it. Is yeah. that the kind of Narnia house one? Sort of yeah, deal, the, the, the different dimensions. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen a little bit of it. I, I haven't caught on up Netflix. It yet, so. It's yeah. it's up yeah. on Netflix. Yeah, I would definitely recommend that though too. You it, used to watch Supernatural, right? You know, I was intrigued by that, but it, it kind of 
you know, I, I kind of like the idea and, and I thought, you know, this is a great idea for like a serial type of show, you know, but well, then it kind of, it couldn't it, pull it off. well, like, like walking dead, it, it just, it, it was just like out. <laughs> the first few seasons, it was like progressively the villains would get more powerful, obviously. So when they reveal, you know, oh my God, they're fighting demons. It's like, that's a big deal. But then the next season, like angels come and it's like, how do you top that? I mean, they're <laughs> yeah. like the Supreme distillation of heavenly power, like. How, <laughs> but they found a way for twelve more seasons, yeah. and it was okay. I'm done. I like, think it's the same concept of diehard fans. People that yeah, have been with mm-hmm. it from the beginning feel obligated Obli- to stick yeah. through it. Yep. Yeah. Where Brian's like, "Liberate yourself, <laughs> pull away, <laughs> feel free." <laughs> Come on in, boys. The water's fine. <laughs> yeah. So does anyone here like Stranger Things? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, One of my favorites. I have. Yeah. Been recent. I think the last season recovered itself a little bit because the season before it, I don't know. I, f- I found myself in a few episodes losing interest. Me too. Mm-hmm. And season one, season then second season there. Yeah, third season was good. Yeah, though. I liked it. I mean, I, I still think the first season's just that's gonna be sad because yeah. it was like yeah. you didn't know it came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. I just remember the weekend it came out and. I started watching it because of that. Yeah. Just just because of the eighties theme, you know, growing up in the eighties, I'm like, oh, I'm, I might find this interesting. And Netflix didn't advertise they didn't it at all. They didn't oh, think yeah. it would do anything. No. Well, yeah. I think they knew they had a following. I think they just knew. Yeah. But it is weird. You would think. Yeah, I like I like that. How about that show? It's called Evil. It was That's on. New, right? Yeah, it I, was on like NBC, ABC, CBS. Yeah, one of those. It's kind of like the X Files, where you have like two main characters, right? I haven't seen this. I just know of it. Yep. Which happens a lot in my life. I know of the thing, <laughs> but I just haven't seen it. So, one's a priest, right? Luke Cage guy there. The Luke Cage is the priest. Yeah. <laughs> and the most handsome priest. Oh, yeah, the most handsome <laughs> I did see the first couple episodes of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that was yeah. fun, actually. If you, I yeah. mean, I'm considering but is it. every episode about demonic possession? Is no, it, all of them know, are okay. different. Yeah, kind of X File ish. Mm-hmm. She's a she's a profiler. She one kinda, believes, one doesn't. Yep. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. I think I like that. I, I think, considering it's on just on standard television, it's not on any paid subscription channel. It's from network TV, so how scary! And actually, they do it? a good job. Oh, okay. I mean, I watched it alone, and there's some episodes that I was a little creeped out by. I mean, I wasn't okay. like I can't go to bed, but I was definitely a little mm-hmm. like, oh, this is a little I'll, creepy. I'll imitate my mom when she was trying to tell me <laughs> about this. You have to watch this show, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> It was so scary. There was a demon. You would have lost your mind. It was so scary. <laughs> <laughs> this was right up your alley. I said, Steph, this is right up your alley. you got to watch this. I know. I think I saw one episode, and the problem was is it was on at like 10 at night, I think, 10 o'clock yeah. at night. And I have to get up so early for work that I was, I can't stay up that late. 8 o'clock comes, I'm starting to feel drowsy. <laughs> Sound like your mother now. I was so tired, of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to watch it. Let's talk about reality shows. I have a few on here. I mean, unsolved mysteries we've covered, but I like a show called Dead Files. I don't know if you guys have seen. Yeah, this, this is probably my favorite paranormal yes. reality show. Is that with the uh, so. husband and wife? No, the cop and the cop. But she's not his wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. She, she makes really strange faces that. all the time. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Okay. I just love it because she walks in and she's always like, oh, there's a giant demon standing in the corner. I can see him and he's holding the head of a victim, you know? <laughs> she oh, God. Oh, <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. I know. When they have the sit down and she she has the picture drawn because she oh, gets yeah. like a, a police like drawing of what she sees. Yes. And she's always like, yes. Yes. That's what it is. Is and this then, what you saw, Amy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then when they show the people... This horrific looking thing that she drew. You can see all their faces drop, all their faces turn white. They're like, well, what should we do now? <laughs> <laughs> We're done. Bye. Good luck. And she always brings in the craziest answer, like, you need a chaos magician. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you need to take salt water and start washing the walls. <laughs> I recommend fire and lots of it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a cool show. You know, my dad's actually addicted to that one. The Dead um, Files? Yeah. I'll always, if I come over to my parents' house, it's and he's the one in control of the TV, it's either that or the first 48 
that's mm-hmm. on, okay. I don't, you know, that murder mystery yeah. show. Two shows that took the early 2000s by storm that I, I still kind of like are A Haunting and Ghost Hunters. A Haunting oh, yeah. is super scary. Yeah. Yeah. A Haunting in Connecticut when I first saw that. Oh, my gosh. My dad was frightened. My da- I've never seen my dad scared of anything. He's like, oh, I'm going to get holy water and sprinkle it around the house. <laughs> 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 But I love those those like little reenactments and stuff that A Haunting did. A lot of shows kind of jump on that bandwagon now, but I really like that one. I, I got sucked into that pretty bad. I'm sure if I go back and watch them now, it's like, mm, some of these are pretty corny. But <laughs> It's true with most things you go back to. I'm like, why did I like this in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one I liked, well, you said Ghost Hunters, right? Mm-hmm. Taps? Yeah. That was good. Psychic Kids? Yes. I don't think I saw that one. Never that seen one. That. Do they still even do that? Because it they seems... rebooted it. Oh, it's really good. It Chip is. Coffee. Chip Coffee. Chip was Coffee. The... I know who he is. Yeah. He was on the um, Paranormal, Paranormal State. State. That was a good one. That's on oh, the list that's, too. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I I would always would watch. I feel like that was an OG one. I feel like that yeah. one really brought in, ushered yeah. in the reality yeah. TV ghost hunting. Yeah. What was the name mm-hmm. of the guy that was like the main person? hosting paranormal state ryan something, ryan something yeah, but he had remember. like a total life meltdown yeah oh wow yeah and he did the show right before the show i think it was they during, were still during, during and the show. he did something where people bought either merchandise or tickets or something he was shysty he was doing shysty stuff with money but i think he had a drug addiction problem right? yes yeah major drug problem so i feel bad because i i like him and i think he just had uh he was struggling with something and made a bad mistake so i forgive him there was a girl on there, Katrina Wel- Weldman, Weldman, who ended up bouncing out of that. And She's got her own show. Yeah, with Nick. Well, actually, she does Portals to Hell with... Uh, oh, jeez. What's his name? Ozzy Osbourne's kid there, Jack Osbourne. That's... What? Yeah, Portals to Hell with Jack Osbourne. Oh, and God. And she sprung into that. But she had done one before that that I really liked. I think it was called Paranormal Lockdown. And she did that mm-hmm. with Nick Groff, who was from Ghost Adventures that left... And they would actually get locked into a location for three days. They didn't mess around. Like, it wasn't like yeah. Zag Baggins, they go in for 12 hours, they lock themselves in overnight. He stayed there three days, and he would sleep in the scariest rooms that there were. They would split up at night. He might sleep in a bathtub where someone was murdered, and she might sleep in a hallway, you know, Jeez. of a morgue. <laughs> and wow. that's balls to the wall to me. Like, yeah. Whoa. There, the earliest show of that whole reality ghost thing I can remember was, is, was actually by MTV. It was that show Fear, where they would take a bunch of college-aged idiots and strap those camera vests to them, where oh, they, it kind of yeah. comes out like your microphone here, and it like faces them directly. I so remember you, that. That's all you see is their face and yep. like night vision, freaking. And they would just go. You know, spend the night in an abandoned prison. Yes, that was the one I remember <laughs> the most. Actually, yeah. no, I would love to do that. I don't know. About, you would? Yeah, I would love to spend the night in any haunted house or. But prison. would you do it alone, or would you not um, alone? Like if with a if you had a partner and that partner was in another room and said, "Brian, you sleep I think here." I, would, I could do it wow. in my mind. I can handle it, but in the reality of it, <laughs> maybe it would end up differently. I don't know, but. Wow. I don't know. I, I always wanted to experience because I never really experienced anything ghost wise, and that's always interested me my whole life wow. was the paranormal. So I would love to put myself in that situation. So I'd be afraid our... to bring it home, but we're I gonna do a to... live podcast. Yeah, I know. We we, like Brian, put Brian in the cemetery <laughs> <laughs> for a whole night. We'll just, we'll just have I him. Should have brought in. a blanket. Yeah. You just disappear and like wind up three hours later back with yeah. a yeah, hot dog. I gave up <laughs> like a hot dog. <laughs> I already don't like camping, and I've explained that story before. <laughs> Even if you had a nice, comfortable cot, I don't know. If, I don't know if it's comfort. I think it's more my mind races at night, and I don't sleep because of the unexpected. You know, it yeah. could be unexpected because there's an owl in the tree, or there's yeah. a bear, or there's <laughs> ghosts, or whatever. I know that yeah. one of the places that we'd go with Tim, I went there a couple times, oh, but yeah. never spent yeah. the night. I go there a lot down in Tully, there was a little pond. I spent the night there by myself once. Oh, God. And there was a... Right when we get to the campsite, there's an old gravestone that's basically has a tree grown around it because mm-hmm. it's so two old. Two of them, actually. It was there's a, two? Yeah, it, I, I looked that up. It was a couple that... So, okay, so what she's talking about is right there in that spot going back 
you know, probably over a century at this point. It was actually a farmhouse on this lake right alongside the pond. You can tell that like a good chunk of the shore is this man-made shoreline that was actually like a dike that they had made. And on the other side was, I guess they'd use it to like irrigate crops or whatever nearby. When they died, they were buried there and the homes long since been destroyed i don't think they had kids or something like nobody inherited the house so eventually it just you know the house went bye-bye and they've actually relocated the bodies that i even managed to find that out the but the stones are still there, there. See, i wish i knew that yeah. because i would have felt a lot better being there because the moment i saw that i i couldn't sleep yeah it doesn't mean that the spirits aren't roaming the hills <laughs> i leave out whiskey for them when i camp there I ah just... he does offerings <laughs> <laughs> i guess you could call it that it's more of a, a you know thanks for letting me kind of camp out in your final well what was supposed to be your final resting place um i'm gonna just you know here have one on me but <laughs> <laughs> i do have penny dreadful oh story. that was good I like that a lot. Did you like the oh, man. Showtime series? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ava Green. Is yes. Like, I have the biggest crush on her. I have the biggest crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> She's absolutely gorgeous. She's perfect in that role. She has a twin sister, Brian. She does? Yes. Oh, my God. So yeah. I have a chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, she yeah, was, was perfect. Great. She was perfect. They, re- they uh, reinvented a lot of classic monsters, too, that I wasn't expecting. Like the Frankenstein monster mm-hmm. and uh, Wolfman and stuff like that. that. That was such a great, great uh, TV show. They redid it. There's a new Penny Dreadful, but I haven't. I haven't checked that me one out. Me neither. Yeah. I was kind of like, mm, I don't think, I think it's it already got canceled. Did it really? I think so. Oh, yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't think anyone can do it better than the original cast. Even though yeah. I'm not a huge Josh Hartnett fan, he wasn't he too was bad. In it, that. Yeah. yeah. Now, what Carnival was that? That show that I started with you. Yeah. And it didn't really have much of an ending because it didn't. It got canceled cut. too. But that was really, really good. Oh. It had a lot of paranormal ish type themes, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it. Was it was like a very classic good versus evil story. Um, two opposing forces. It was based in a, a traveling carnival. Um, the evil guy was like a preacher, and the good guy was this wandering guy that ended up in the carnival. And I uh, never finished it, so I can't really like say that. It ended up being that great, but it was it was well done. It was in the early years of HBO where they would cancel a lot of shows because they were so expensive. Like, yeah, you know, like Rome. Remember yeah. Rome? Even yeah. though only the first season of that was good, the second season yeah. was just yeah. But, but now I think now if they they did it, they could do it justice. Yeah. The only show I I have left is it, it's like sci-fi horror, but it's an enduring classic, and it's one of my favorite shows ever. Is Doctor Who. Mm-hmm. And, it, you know, it, it, a lot of it is made for kids, and it's kind of, you know, you go back at it and look at it. Now it's not scary, but th- I think there's one enduringly scary thing about Doctor Who, and that is, believe it or not, is the Daleks. And anybody who isn't into the show and just saw them or heard them would be like, what's scary about this? But once again, they, they just represent, like, you know, the evil but, I mean, they're these, like, you know, space Nazis in a tin can, and they're completely patient they don't emote they don't do anything beyond kill and they're so singularly minded i always thought that to me it's like like i've said before in the previous podcast i was in it's more like certain concepts grounded in reality like tend to scare me and it's and so it's not like i would run in fear you know if they came on the tv but like well the theme song was scary i remember hearing that when i was a kid and i'm like what is that yeah, oh, the original. Great theme song, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Who. Yeah. I only re- I liked the one that the guy with the curly curly like, hair and big. Stuff. Oh, Tom Baker. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite was Sylvester McCoy, who was the last Doctor in the original run, um, because he was like a he was like this little man that was very happy and playful on the surface. He was like a clown, but his thing was since he wasn't big and tough or couldn't even run that fast, <laughs> his his strategy was always to use enemies hubris against them like he used to talk his enemies into suicide he was like the darkest doctor he blew up planets one out of every three episodes well he didn't he would get the enemies to blow themselves up so and then you know at the end of every serial with you know story with him in it you come to find out like the whole time he's been running he's been setting them up and I thought to the point where he was so dark that in all of the canon and everything that followed after they canceled the show the first time, they were like, 
they first of all they ran off the rails with it. He just got darker and darker, and then they, eventually they were like, "We're making this TV movie, and we have to introduce another doctor." Like he is, because this one is just too far. Like the kids aren't going to like him, yeah. you know. <laughs> like he's so out of it. But you go back and you watch it, and it's like I like heroes that can kind of outthink their enemy, that kind of thing. Like I, so I always loved him for that. He was always like this. Not what he was on the surface. Well, guys, I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Ricky. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. And Thanks for having me. We're, we're going to have have you again. I'm sure we'll come up with Absolutely, something crazy. Yeah. I'm Beck. And I'm Steph. Don't be the star of your own horror series. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. To the spirit. Podcast. Supernatural society. In the I'm ghost. I'm ghost. I'm ghost. Thank you. Missed it. Spirit. Divine source. Heaven. The dead. It's magic, magic, magic.